Thank you for checking out my video. I really love Hatsune Miku and enjoy sharing some of that dedication by making videos all about her. To improve my content, I decided to launch my own Patreon page, where you can support me if you feel like Miku's magic reached you by watching them, with neat rewards waiting too. Link in the description. Well, that's all, and now enjoy the new video. Hi there, Sanki the Miku again. As always, thank you for checking out my newest video. I just wanted to do another Miku video as always, but I'm in quite a pinch right now. Do you see that? Kaito, Len, Luca and Meku are threatening me and all the other Mikus to do really evil things with them unless I do a video focused on them for once. So of course I don't want all the poor Mikus to be hurt, so I guess I have no choice. Okay, so they just told me that I'm supposed to do another top 10 videos in future tone list, but of course featuring these guys. And what's apparently important is that it has to be a both a good video and a good song. What else? Oh yeah, and also I'm only including stuff that hasn't been featured prominently in any of my other videos yet, right? What else is there? Well, obviously Miku videos are banned, I'm very angry about that. But so I didn't videos because I already made a separate video dedicated to her. So, no. Len, oh, what are you saying, Len? Oh, apparently you didn't and Len duets are fine. Stop that, please don't hurt my Mikus. Uh, whatever, I guess I have no choice but to do this list. So, I guess, uh, enjoy. Number 10. Oh, kick ass! We start the list by checking out a neat song by my secret vocal at Crush Kaito. But seriously, now, we're actually looking at a cool video here as well as a decent song. The theme is pretty depressing. It's just about the transience of life with everything going back to ashes. Gee, what is Kaito up to actually? He's just sitting down on a throne in some sort of creepy castle. Is he just waiting for his end? I mean, sure, make fun of you from time to time, but suicide is not an option, you know? Your last song in last year's meter was pretty cool. Phew, I think he calmed down. Well, even so, we find him chilling on a graveyard and then on the balcony of his mansion, singing melancholically. Pretty cool! All of these moving parts of a clock are certainly also a symbol of the unstoppable progression of life. But what's that? Oh, his secret fetish! As he walks toward an organ, we see puppets of all of his vocalant buddies? I hope there are puppets anyway! Are they? They begin moving suddenly! Really creepy, especially their faces, but very well shot. Cool video! In the end, Kaito seems to... die for his sins? Fair enough! Kick ass, right? I noticed we impress everybody at the next party. <laughs> This video isn't all that special to be honest, but a nice example of a well shot dancing could be. The song tells the story of Rin and Len having a difficult time dealing with their adolescents. They don't want to grow up and have all kinds of responsibilities. Another way you can interpret it would be that they are interested in a romantic relationship with each other, but believe me, we get to that later anyway. Lin's long scream at the start sounds very lovely and the scene is portrayed well too, with her brother helping her getting up on her feet. Speaking of feet, I don't want to make too many people quit the video just yet, but let's just say that I like Lin's cute dress, burying her feet, making the whole dance through the video kind of elegant and sexy at the same time. Okay. Yeah, so even though this is all in the same location, it's still so well made. Lin walks up the stairs, gazing into the distance with a happy face while Lin is addressing her from the bottom. The camera angles and lighting are both brilliant throughout. Their movements are incredibly fluent and their expressions believably made. Just watch their dance closely, as they switch between solos going back and forth between the two. Wow, that scene with the spotlight effect too! This is proof that a dance movie can be very nice to look at as well. What is it with Luca songs being so depressing? I already discussed Hello Work in my top 10 finale video and now this one is also not as happy as you might expect. Luca is aware about the fact that nobody in love is probably irreplaceable, except for Miku. Nobody would even notice when she would be gone. She thinks of an imaginary interview where she is the center of attention, being asked all kinds of questions. The video has a pretty unique art style to it. She walks around in a strange looking world. After she got off an elevator where everybody else was just a symbol of what a person looks like, she is in the middle of a lot of tables and chairs, one of which represents her place in life. Yeah, everything is designed as cold looking on purpose. While she walks down the street, thinking there would be no future for her, it shows the no entry sign of the end of the road. She then sees herself on a big screen with people talking about her. She doesn't want to be just another replaceable being. Oh yeah, the entire time there are some symbols found on a smartphone display on the top of the screen. Even Luca can access 39G. One final time she thinks about this interview and comes to a positive conclusion. There are all kinds of opportunities, portrayed by the doors in the video. I'm glad it ends like that, with happy pictures of Luca thinking about her future in a positive way. Ha! Huh, I know what a lot of you will be thinking about the topic of this song. Just to explain again, Lin and Len are Krypton vocalists and thus have pretty much no background story. Depending on what the author of the song wants to tell about, they are either siblings or lovers. Well, but here this is conveniently combined, and I know some moralizers will not like that one bit. You know what? They are fictional, I think that just makes it even more sexy, because incest is such a taboo. Anyway, Len is in some sort of ancient setting, singing about how there is no way from Earth's personal garden of Eden because he is in a relationship with his sister. It's really all pretty well made for an arcade exclusive video. 
There are all kinds of symbols from the story of the Bible, like the forbidden fruit, the apple, and some snakes who are the temptation of his. He shares how his friends already talk badly about them, but he doesn't care. There are several scenes in which Lin and Len get close to each other, but my absolute favorite part is the one where Lin drags Len along by his hand and at one point is looking back at him with a very interesting expression on her face. To me she's just saying, you know you don't want to turn back now, do you? Yeah. Just a nice video about a taboo topic. Hello, I'm just your regular western anime fan and really like the song Out of Eden recently. It's just an amazing song. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, there's incest in there? What? Oh, I hate this song, this can't be- No! Zero on the fan! Fuck! No! Yep, that's how it always goes, right? Also the reason why Yosuke and Asura's are rated so badly, right? I love that anime, it doesn't make any sense. Pro tip, these characters are fictional. FICTIONAL! You know what? Forget about the meaning of the song. Who cares? The way this is shot in combination with Mako's amazing outfit, having a belt as a bra, makes it pretty clear that the producer of the video didn't really want to tell a story here anyway. This one proves how well every single video in Perseum F was made, even the dance PVs, with so much attention to achieving the most stunning camera angles. The first team carefully scans every part of Mako's body, changing scenes in the beat to the music. We have to be honest here, Mako is aware that she is usually rather pushed to the back, but she knows that she can impress for once with a sexy show like this. Kind of rude to say, I apologize. I assure you, I like the song too, don't worry. Oh, I think this is like a questionable photo shooting anyway. Set in a stunning location, a platform on a lake with the many lights pointed at Mako. She sure knows how to take advantage of a stage like that, performing a fantastic dance before going up the stairs, playing with the viewers by striking a meaningful expression, not being afraid of what the camera angle clearly reveals from the top. The rest is performed on the top of the station, there's even a fireworks display as the conclusion. Gee, I hope she got paid royally for that one. What? Yeah, I'm done with my sexist talk about Mako's body. Don't pretend you didn't like it. Number five. This is a very catchy Lin and Len song with no real deep meaning. Both of them are just playing with each other, controlling one another with the remote controls. They are both sitting down in a futuristic looking playroom. Len just has a regular remote control, while Lin actually uses a Sega Dreamcast controller. You can immediately see both the supernatural nature of the video with the controller floating into the air, as well as cool stylistic devices like the split up screen before that happens. After the main dance of the video was shown off, Lin is the first to have the wicked idea to remote control her brother. I like how she reluctantly looks back at Len, debating whether this is a good idea or not. Well, never mind all of that, she then just sits there with a delighted look on her face and can't stop with these shenanigans. She's having way too much fun with this. Anyway, after her sister teased him with this some more, it's time for revenge. Now he gets to enjoy a forced private dance show first. Well deserved, if I might add that. There's some more of these scenes with a split up screen and even a very funny look on both of the siblings' faces. Looks like they have to go to the toilet quickly, when in the end, both of them are just having fun together again. What a lovely relationship they always have, no matter if it's siblings or lovers. Or oh, both of that combined. There you go, I know I pretty much degraded Mako as some sort of sex symbol in my last pick, but come on, what else can you comment in a video like that? Whatever, this video is very different. I get the impression Mako is pissed at me for what I did, since she apparently wants to just break everything. Why though? From what I found out, this video tells about Mako being in love with her girlfriend, Miku. Hold the phone, I have several questions. First of all, why would you want to break shit if Miku was your girlfriend? But most importantly, hey, Mako? How can Miku be your girlfriend when she's already mine? Your answer? Still cool to experience a very different side of hers. She's just badass. The setting as well seems like some abandoned factory that also has a huge fan and furnace. How did she gain access? In every single shot she appears to be pissed. Did it really hurt her feelings that much? No matter what it is, she first decides to casually go to sleep in that place. I have no idea how that next scene where her eyes are centered and many eyeballs are looking at her fit in with any of this. Who cares though? Do I have to do all of the work here? Yes? Oh. I know I just wanna get out of here. She just keeps singing about how she wants to destroy everything as the camera zooms in on her lips while she's uttering these words. The words destroy are even written down in Japanese on the back several times. Yeah, honestly, I have no idea. In the end, Mac was on a rooftop during a thunderstorm. Whatever suits you, I guess. I liked your sexy side better. But yeah, impressive video. What the fuck are you doing? Stop that! Why are you doing that? But I forgive you if you do your dance from before again. Number three. 
Oh, so cute. I know I already talked about this adorable love story between Lin and Len in some of my concert reviews. I really love the song itself too, but I can't just ignore this well-made diva video. To sum it up, right from the start, Len declares his love for Lin, but she's puzzled by this and doesn't want to be forced to decide between two extremes. Does she love him or hate him? The whole thing takes place in a charming little place right out of a fantasy world. But the video brings the topic of recreating the story of a song in a diva PV to yet another level. It's all there, shown in little comic panels. Lin is feeling angry about the confession, but can't get it out of her little head either. Len already thinks I had very fun, has exact plans for three children in the place where he wants to live with her. Lin reminds him that they are only 14 years old, to which she then replies once more, I love you. She is getting very angry now, he's not even listening. After the cute dance routine of the song, the next part of the story gets shown during the instrumental, even though the diva video of the song cuts the second verse altogether. So we can still see how Lin buys his crush a gift and how Lin imagines him while kissing her teddy bear. Then the perfect conclusion, Lin finally understands that she is in love with him. Even the wedding bells are ringing in the end, as we see some cute pictures of the newlyweds. I guess? That escalated quickly. In this fantastic Luca video, both herself and her lover are obsessed with the collection of all kinds of glasses and Luca wears them in playful ways. I can imagine what kind of situations too. The video doesn't show her lover, but it begins with her waking up early, washing her face and putting on her first pair of glasses. Next she's trying all kinds of glasses, only noticing afterwards she's already late. After she ran outside in an overly sexual way, I mean just listen to the focus on her heavy breathing, she studies in a library. For every situation she has fitting glasses, naturally. Well, she falls asleep in there, so she decides to have some tea. Tea next. Tea? Oh wait, I'm not Irish, I mean some dinner. Other nice scenes involve Luca unable to reach a book up high on a shelf, drinking some actual tea, brushing her teeth and more. Just pretty well made with lots of attention to detail. I love how she has several pictures of her vocal bodies on the wall and if you look closely, they are all wearing glasses. Did she edit these pictures or made them wear some all the time? But wow, her timid and embarrassed expression at the end, very nice. So there you have it, if you wanna get close to Luca, just become a glasses geek yourself. Yeah, very nice Luca Chan, but don't you think that I'll be the one who cleans up this mess later? Funny how this list was specifically about songs not featuring Miko and Lin, but ended up having so many Lin and Lin duets. I mean, I just couldn't ignore those. My number one spot has Lin in the focus anyway, he is singing. This is yet another love story. Lin fell in love with Lin, who is not his sister in this story. He met her during summer holiday. This makes for a fantastic setting. You can see the fire flower symbol for their love right at the beginning. From there on, this is just a lovely story about the two of them having a blast spending the holiday together. They are paragliding together, even if there doesn't seem to be anybody controlling the boat, having playful fun with a host, Everything mixed with scenes where Dan is singing this very love song for her live on stage. Close to the end the focus shifts more to that very performance. Some fireworks go off and you can see Lynn watching him in the audience. She realizes her feelings and starts crying out of happiness. I have to cry too. More moments of their time together on the beach are mixed into this final scene. Man, all of these Lynn and Lynn love songs are just so heartwarming. Such a cute couple. As well as an amazing display of this in the Diva PV and my worthy winner of these picks dedicated to Kaito, Meiko, Luca and Len. Well, and kind of within as well by default. I'm very glad to find that all my Krypton friends have now made up again. And I really have to say, this was more interesting than I expected. All you other guys really also have a fair share of amazing stuff. If you agree and thought this video was interesting, you can give it a thumbs up, comment, share with your friends, and of course, subscribe to my channel, which is all about Miku, sorry, to never miss another Miku video again. So until next time, and I hope you have a nice uh, Krypton day.